Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 4-H Awards of Excellence Ceremony. I am Sarah Gardner, your Arkansas 4-H State President from Washington County. Thank you for joining me at tonight's event. We will celebrate the outstanding work of Arkansas's top 4-H members and the wonderful support of our many donors. Just like our theme, these individuals truly ignite the passion that drives everything Arkansas 4-H does. We are so pleased to have the Arkansas Electric Cooperatives as a huge part of tonight's program. Please rise as Nick Pullman, Ozark District Vice President from Washington County, and Davis Smith, Secretary from Mississippi County, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and the 4-H Pledge, respectively. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I pledge my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. Thank you, Nick and Davis. I am Jessica Griffin, first vice president from Greene County. And joining me in welcoming a few special guests here this evening is Sarah Gaskin, Delta District Vice President from White County. On behalf of all the 4-H members participating in the 2019 Arkansas 4-H State Arama, I can assure you that we appreciate the opportunity to experience all the aspects of the University of Arkansas. Conducting a successful program for more than 150,000 youth would be impossible without the support of many people. We are honored to have a few of these individuals as our guests this evening. Please stand as we call your name or when your group is called. Please hold all applause until all groups have been called. Dr. Rick Cartwright, Associate Vice President for Agriculture and Extension. Dr. Martha Ray Sarter, Interim Associate Director, Family and Consumer Science and 4-H Youth Development. Dr. D.Q. Fields and all faculty and staff from the Dale Bumpers College of Agriculture, Food and Life Science. Our special guest speaker, Dr. Donna Graham, University of Arkansas, Professor for the Agriculture Education, Communication and Technology Department. Arkansas 4-H board members. Dawson Smith, 2018-2019, Arkansas FFA President and current National FFA Officer Candidate. All of our 4-H donors, sponsors, and partners. Tonight we are excited to recognize some special friends of 4-H. Our first recipient has a signature phrase, I'm here to serve. It is far more than just talk. This recipient has been a friend of 4-H for nearly 18 years. It is friendship th that began when he joined the Arkansas Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. And what a friendship it has been. He has served on our Arkansas 4-H Foundation Board. He made great use of his 29 years of experience in the communications, utilities, and information technology sectors and bringing support to Seaperch, a program that teaches STEM skills in building, programming, and operating an underwater vehicle. His humor, strong presence, and gentle personality have endeared him to our 4-H members, volunteers, and employees. It is a great honor to present this Friend of 4-H Award to Mr. Rob Rodell, a member of 4-H Foundation Board and Director of Co Corporate Communications for the Arkansas Electric Cooperatives Corporation. Please welcome him to the stage. Our next friend of 4-H is a two-for-one special, and both of them are very special. They are no strangers to 4-H or the mission of the Cooperatives Extension Service, having spent decades working for the Division of Agriculture in a number of roles. 
Their dedication to the land-grant mission that empowers the Extension Service and 4-H is deep within these two, so much so that even in retirement, they continue its work. One half of this duo spent six years serving on our foundation board. The two were the brains behind our 20 for 2020 fundraising campaign. They have both freely given of their retirement dollars and that most precious of commodities, their time, to the Arkansas 4-H program. We are honored to present this Friend of 4-H Award to Mr. Tom and Mrs. Julie Riley. Congratulations to Mr. Rob, Mr. Tom, and Mrs. Judy. We are so grateful for your passionate support. We would not be successful without you. Let's give them one more round of applause for their dedication to igniting the 4-H program. <laughs> At this time, I would like to welcome forward Mrs. Edda Marie Belden with the Arkansas 4-H Alumni Association to present a very special award. year the 4-H uh, Alumni Association gives honors a uh, former 4-H'er who has exhibited uh, continued support for the 4-H uh, uh, organization and this year it is Mark Harrison. <clears throat> Mark and his sister Melissa never had a choice but to enroll in 4-H as his parents Joel and Kim Harrison, grandparents, great-grandparents, were involved either as members or leaders way back in the earliest days of 4-H in the Arkansas birthplace of White County. After attending CAPS camp, Mark immediately became enthralled with the uh, opportunities for self-improvement and leadership that could be found in 4-H. His extensive involvement led to recognition as a teen star, state ambassador, uh, Northeast vice president, and state president. The list of camps, workshops, conferences, and projects are too numerous to list, but Mark was especially proud to serve two seasons as program assistant at the National 4-H Center, where he joined a group of other 20-something-year-olds charged with teaching government and history to 4-H and other youth groups. Mark probably holds the record for consecutive finalist nominations to the Arkansas 4-H Hall of Fame with four, but if you're not going to win, then what better number than four? <laughs> Mark graduated from the University of Arkansas system and spent most of his professional life as a senior advisor to former Arkansas Governor Mike Beebe. Recently, he became chief administrator for the Pulaski County Circuit Clerk, uh, co-directs 90-plus persons uh, staff charged with providing support and record retention for the largest court system in the state. Pulaski Clerk is also responsible for filing, archiving, and preserving uh, all the filing records of the 17 divisions that comprise uh, Pulaski County Circuit other legal documents, voter registrations, marriage licenses, real estate transactions, and he was talking about this afternoon. Sounds fascinating. Uh, service uh, to Forage and Extension still encompasses Mark's life as he serves on the uh, Arkansas 4 H Foundation, chair of the Assets and Operations Committee, and the Executive Committee. He also is a member of the LEADAR class of 18. Uh, Mark's proudest achievement, though, 
are his two children, Emily and Jack, active Pulaski County 4-H'ers who have just begun their 4-H journey, to which Mark is loving the experiences they now have as they begin <coughs> the next chapter of the Harrisons in 4-H. Mark. Thank you to the Alumni Association and congratulations to Mark Harrison. And since we just had the man himself on stage, we also want to recognize our continued partnership with the Electric Cooperative of Arkansas. We appreciate everything that they do to support the youth of Arkansas 4-H. Ladies and gentlemen, please turn your attention to the screens as a very special 4-H supporter highlights the importance of Arkansas 4-H's highest honor. Good evening, 4-H. I'm Governor Asa Hutchinson. The Arkansas 4-H Governor's Award is the highest award the organization bestows on a 4-H'er. It is presented to an individual who not only lives the 4-H mission, but has inspired others as well. Tonight, we highlight four finalists for their great achievements within the 4-H program. I'm proud of all four, and I'm confident that each one will improve 4-H and the state of Arkansas. At this time, we would like to showcase the achievements of tonight's first Governor's Award finalist, Sagely Burnett of Washington County. Sagely? My only goal when I started 4-H was to show my chickens and show my rabbits, and that's all I wanted. I was very determined to not be an officer. I was very determined to never have to give a speech. Um, I had lots of anxiety as a kid. So in 2015, I was at Nationals for Livestock Skills, and I was chosen to give the reasons for the goats because I was the only goat person on the team. My reasons were very quick, like 50 seconds tops, just explaining a class of eight goats. After I'd done it though, I was like, you know what, I did okay. And that was like confirmation that I was getting better. As I got older, especially in my last year and a half of 4-H, I started focusing on sustainable agriculture um, and how it is in relation to food wastage. And in a state like Arkansas, how that relates to food insecurity. I landed an internship as a SNAP educator. So as a SNAP educator, you go around and you teach people who are on food stamps or at risk of being on food stamps, um, and you teach them and give them resources to live a healthier life. I was in 4-H. I had all that knowledge before. So when my boss needed me to go and do a program, I knew the MyPlate curriculum, and I knew the um, eat right for your type or like things for diabetes. I knew all the previous knowledge from 4-H. One experience that really helped me was I had just ran for state officer the first time and I didn't get it the first time and it crushed me, like my, my heart, my soul, and I was questioning like, am I really a leader? But one of our Clover Buds after the meeting, she was five, she just joined, and she crawls in my lap and she whispers in my ear and she's like, I want to be like you when I grow up. And it was like one of the best things that had happened to me because it was a week after I had been absolutely devastated like questioning myself and questioning my purpose and her saying that like I don't want her to be like me I want her to be herself but at the same time it was like I am doing something right I think 4-H is the only place that I felt completely myself that I felt like I can be me and everybody's okay with it because people don't believe that I'm homeschooled people don't believe that I'm shy people don't believe that like I'm an introvert because 4-H has made me this person who's so much better than who I was before. It's hard to explain what 4-H has done for me. 
because it's done everything. Sagely, please join us on stage to be recognized as a 2019 finalist for your hard work and dedication to Arkansas 4-H. Congratulations, Sagely. Once again, we would like to remind everyone that tonight's event is being streamed live and recorded at www.uaex.edu slash 4-H live, which can also be found on the back of your program. This evening, we are honored to have a very special guest with us to celebrate the many accomplishments of our outstanding Arkansas 4-H youth. Dr. Donna L. Graham is a university professor and graduate coordinator in the Department of Agricultural Education, Communications, and Technology. Dr. Graham has received 13 regional and national awards for excellence in teaching and advising and is a recent inductee into the Arkansas Agriculture Hall of Fame. She has received the Distinguished Alumna Award from the University of Arkansas, the Spitz Land Grant Award for Faculty Excellence, and the Outstanding Agricultural Educator Award from the American Association for Agricultural Education, where she is a senior fellow. From 2001 to 2010, she served as the Associate Dean for the Dale Bumpers College of Agricultural Food and Life Sciences. Graham was instrumental in developing the Extension Education major and the Agriculture and Extension Education Master's degree program. She is a co-author of the textbook, Education Through Cooperative Extension. Prior to her campus appointment, she worked for the Cooperative Extension Service in various county, area, and state positions. She is a native of Damascus, Arkansas in Faulkner County. Her education background includes a bachelor's and master's degree from the University of Arkansas and a PhD in agricultural and extension education from the University of Maryland. Please welcome Dr. Donna Graham to the stage. I get their script mixed up. <laughs> well, it's my pleasure to be here tonight to welcome all of you and welcome to this campus, the home of road closures, sidewalk closures, <laughs> and detours. So, but we control the weather just a little, so congratulations. It's great for you to be on campus and that I hope you find that your uh, visit is very enjoyable. I hope that all of you 4-H'ers that were at the college picnic today took time to meet with some of our college representatives because we're always on the lookout for strong-willed, able-bodied students to come and major in various majors across our campus, but particularly in our college. And if you didn't meet some and you have some interest, you see me after this program, I'll give you some name and addresses of people to call. Congratulations to all those individuals that are going to be recognized tonight. And you've, I know you've worked a long, long time on that, uh, different projects that you've had, those Governor's Award winners and many, many other award winners that I won't take time to uh, mention. But congratulations. And all of you that competed in county or district level activities that made you qualified to come here tonight, Good job, keep working. But I can't forget to recognize our parents, our agents, and the donors that invest their time and their willingness to help, and help all of you as members. So give yourself a big round of applause, yay. <laughs> You've heard this word many, many times at various programs. You've heard the word ignite. So when I first thought of that, I thought, hmm, start a fire. 
It takes a spark, a flame, right, to start a fire. But I sort of doubted that the people that selected that title wanted you to be running out starting fires. So I had to think a little bit more about that, and I thought, aha, this flame is 4-H green. They want you to think about how, and you reflect upon that inner flame that you have. What motivates you? What gives you that determination, that passion that you may have? All of which you can gain that spark in 4-H. So whether you realize it or not, you will gain a great spark and you will be motivated to pursue various things that you have experienced and learned about in your 4-H program. Why do I know that? You heard that I worked previously uh, for extension. Seven years of that was in the 4-H program. And I watched very shy, young, timid 4-H members that they become very well-spoken, they become confident, and they become convinced that they can solve any problem in front of them. So if you haven't reached that point yet, you will. But every fire starts with a spark. So what are our sparks in 4-H? What brings about that flame? Well, first of all, I'm going to say this aroma is one of those opportunities that you have. You have opportunities in your project work, in your competitive activities, in the trips, in the camps that you go on, a great variety of experiences that you can have. I saw 4-H members that became very enthused and very motivated after a trip to Washington, D.C. on that citizenship short course trip. I saw others who were on the livestock judging team who became very enthused about majoring in veterinary medicine. And another that studied foods and nutrition that decided that public health was her passion, that she wanted to help individuals become healthier in their lifestyle. And so she majored in dietetics. So these activities or projects are not the only. You can be involved in the tech team. And I talked to several tonight at our table that are very interested in technology and in robotics. But perhaps it's that high adventure program that you went on that you became interested in. Uh, maybe it's those things that interest that sparked you to study engineering or computer science. 4-H has a lot of projects. So these opportunities give you the opportunity to network. And you will meet many, many friends here. Now, I know you've taken 100 pictures already. So can you name all those people in your photos? So before you go home, meet those individuals, get to know their names because your friends will become a network for you for a lifetime. It offers you also a chance to meet a lot of people that are different than you. They're from large cities, they're from small towns. You know, you heard of us from Damascus and when I grew up, the population might have been 200 if we counted the dogs and cats. So it's a very small town when I came here at the university. But you'll meet those that are older, that are younger, of different races, of different personalities, of different abilities, different cultures from you as you uh, meet individuals around the, from your county, from your state, and some of you that take national trips that, that you will learn that we're really all just alike. 4-H affords you an opportunity to travel. How many of you, this is the first time you've come to 4-H Arama? Raise your hand. Good for you, good job. So 4-H gives you these travel opportunities not only to make new friends, but to get out of your comfort zone. Come to a new place, learn new individuals, new parts of the country. So you might be a little nervous for the first time, but it's a great first step. 4-H builds confidence in you as you learn your first talk. And remember how scared you might have been to make that first talk, and we sort of heard about that on this video. But I see individuals as they learn more and more, they become very confident in what they can do from their many years of giving these talks and learning the ability of public speaking. But most of all, 4-H provides a resilience for you to keep trying. You don't always win, do you? Winning is not always the best lesson that we can learn. 
So the ability to lose, to get up, to try again, to persevere, and to understand you don't always get what you want. These are sort of life lessons, but you also learn that it takes a lot of hard work to reach your own goals. 4-H builds leadership. I congratulate all of our officers here tonight. So you can be an officer, but not just at the state level, but the local level. Be a participant in the teen leader program. These experiences do help provide and encourage that confidence in you for public speaking, for your personal skills. But I encourage all of you to lead by example because other people are watching you, especially a lot of your peers. You learn all about life. You learn responsibility and caring for that animal project. You learn organization and dependability, time management and all of your projects. And you learn the motives that some people are not always as they seem. And a lot have inflated egos. So it's not always fun, but life's not always necessarily easy either. So where else can you study 100 different project areas? And in fact, I looked at the program and I think I counted 38 different competitive activities that are going on this week while you're here. So all of these things give you that spark. And these uh, projects and these activities also are very natural linkages to careers. I talked to several people tonight that I know and others what started you and they talked about being in 4-H because that's where you gain that first interest. Now, each one of you, we just tonight, spent our time reciting the 4-H pledge at every event that you go to. It starts with, I pledge my head to clear thinking. Ignite your passion. Ignite it for knowledge. Have a curiosity for learning, for new ideas. Pursue careers that are your passion. Become the leaders of those around you to help educate them. Speak out, speak up. I challenge you to light the fire for agriculture, in particular, for American farmers. Help educate people of farm facts. I know you're on your phone using social media apps, uh, probably daily and maybe right now, but <laughs> why shouldn't you be interested in food and farming? Did you know that Facebook reached 150 million users, and it can reach 150 million users, three times faster than your cell phone? So if you're not at the table and you're not part of that conversation about nutrition or science and agriculture, then how are these misinformation campaigns going to continue to explode about food, fuel, feed, and fiber, and you're a natural audience to reach out and help inform those audiences. Activist groups are becoming increasingly active on social networks. They understand the power of messaging. The Humane Society of the United States has had more than a hundredfold increase in their Twitter following since 2009. Videos on animal rights and environmentalism have in, they increased about 30% a month. So the conversation is happening, and I want to challenge you to use your head to think about the facts that you need to present to individuals because we need to be at the table talking because otherwise sensationalism will replace science. I pledge my heart to greater loyalty. Get ignited, be compassionate, see the world through other people's eyes. Be kind, true, and sympathetic. I bet you've heard that phrase. I like the Fill the Ford activity because there are people in need of food. Food insecurity is a growing problem that we have in many, many communities. So get involved, whether it be food banks or other community initiatives that can help feed families that are less fortunate than you. I pledge my head, hands to larger service. Well, put your hands to work, hard work sometimes. To be what? Helpful, useful, and skillful in your service to your community. I pledge my health to better living. 
Have a passion. Enjoy life. Remember that part about resist disease and work efficiently? Well, you may also help others to achieve that goal. And what is it for? My club, my community, my country, and my world. We need young adults like you to help solve environmental problems, to study genetics, to use technology, to help us. We need your minds. We need all of you. We have a lot of problems facing American farm families, communities that we have, in your own family perhaps, but we have a lot of particular problems. Are you going to be that person that helps solve the problems? I hope that you become ignited. So your membership will be over faster than you think. You're going to be sparked along the way to be interested in certain things. And I hope you will in, in look at the idea of going to college and studying some of these ways that we're going to solve some of the problems I've just listed. So are you ready? Are you set? Ignite. <clears throat> Dr. Graham, on behalf of Arkansas 4-H, I'd like to sincerely thank you for sharing your story as well as your vision for igniting the future of 4-H. Let's give Dr. Graham one more 4-H round of applause. At this time, we would like to showcase the achievements of tonight's second Governor's Award finalist, Lane Fritch from Benton County. So some of my earlier memories of 4-H have to do with like my horsemanship 4-H club, making trips um, to learn about horse judging, but also my county camp, that was one of my earliest memories because my two greatest friends, I met them during that. So those friends of mine, they developed me in a way that nobody else could have. And one of the biggest things was when somebody told me that I'm an example, I'm a role model. And they explained to me that whatever I'm doing, there are younger people watching me. Probably one of the biggest things was when I became a state officer. And so I did it going and fully aware that I might not get the position. But when I did, it was almost a sense of accomplishment. And I felt like I had actually done something with my life. Growing up homeschooled, 4 gave me opportunities like none other. 4-H gave me the opportunities to speak publicly, to learn how to be a camp counselor, how to communicate with people of all different ages. There were just so many opportunities to get involved, to try things that I had never done before. 4-H means the people. The people in 4-H are what makes the organization what it is today. Whether you're a clover bud, a junior, a senior, or just an adult or an extension agent, it doesn't matter. We're all in this together. So now that I'm out of 4-H and I'm off in the real world, I am now working with people all the time at my job and at school. 4-H has given me experiences with multiple projects and categories of real life experiences. And so I feel more prepared for what I'm doing now than I probably would have felt without 4-H. During my time as a 4 h -er, my main goal was to make my best better, um, to always be pushing because giving your 110% is key to making life experiences with other people. I love 4-H and it has been one of the best experiences being a part of that program. I really miss it, I do, but I know that it's made me who I am today and has prepared me for my future. Lane, please join us on stage to be recognized as a 2019 finalist for your hard work and dedication to the Arkansas 4-H program.
Congratulations, Lane. At this time, Brent Clark, a reporter, and Sarah Gaskin, Delta District Vice President, will introduce the state scholarship winners. Although we know that you want to capture this moment of your outstanding 4-H winners, we ask that during the awards, you do not come to the front to take pictures so that we can keep the program flowing. We have a photographer taking pictures of tonight's event, and these pictures will be made available to you for free. You can access the photos via the UAEX Flickr account, a link to which can be found in your program. There is also an official UAEX and Arkansas 4-H backdrop located outside the ballroom that you are free to take pictures in front of at the conclusion of the awards assembly. The purpose of the 4-H scholarship program is to recognize outstanding 4-H members for their accomplishments in project work, citizenship, leadership, and to encourage study at institutions of higher learning. This year's recipients will come forward to receive their checks and as we give you some information about each scholarship. Dr. Rick Cartwright and Mr. Mike Boyd, President for the Arkansas 4-H Foundation Board, will be assisting with the awards. The Ada and Tyrell Anderson 4-H Scholarship was established to recognize and memorialize the care and concern that the Aaron Andersons had throughout their lives for the youth in Madison and Washington counties. This year's recipient is Nick Pullman of Washington County. He will receive $6,000. The Robert D. and Betty F. Oliver Scholarship was originally created to honor the Oliver's parents. The scholarship is for 4-H members who plan to pursue degrees from the University of Arkansas and have excelled as leaders and citizens within their community. This year, Shakota Herder from Searcy County earned this scholarship. Shakota will receive $4,000. Unfortunately, Shakota was not able to be here this evening. This year's recipient of the John W. White Scholarship is Jessica Griffin of Greene County. Jessica will receive $1,000. The next scholarship being awarded tonight is the Larry Sandage Arkansas Forage and Grassland Scholarship. This year's recipient of the scholarship goes to Sarah Gaskin of White County. Sarah will receive $500. The Dennis R. Millard Memorial 4-H Scholarship was created to assist a past or present 4-H member enrolled, in, enrolled at a two or four year institution. The 4-H member must have excelled in leadership, community service, and 4-H mentoring. This year's Millard Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Katie Vermilia of Grant County, who will receive $1,000. Katie was unavailable to attend this ceremony this evening. Next is the CA and Joy Vines Scholarship. Mrs. Vines was an outstanding Forest member and a lifetime supporter of the Extension work. Mr. Vines spent 40 years at the University of Arkansas serving in various roles, such as County Extension Agent and Interim Vice President for Agriculture. He also served the Arkansas Forage Foundation and, it, and was instrumental in building our beloved Forage Center. The recipient of the scholarship goes to Joey Summerford of Lone Oak County. J Joey will receive $1,000. Unfortunately, Joey could not attend this evening, so we wish him all the best. The next scholarship was established in 1981 and recognizes a graduating high school senior and an Arkansas 4-H teen star who has done outstanding work in the area of leadership. Receiving $1,000 for the Zach O. and Jenny D. Jennings scholarship is Ashley Mayo from Benton County.
The Oakland Jockey Club and Arkansas Livestock Show Scholarships are sponsored by the Arkansas State Fair. To be eligible, a 4-H member must have shown at, livestock, at the livestock at the State Fair during the past three years and be a high school senior. The first recipient is Luke Wilson of Cleburne County. The next recipient is Stephen Wilson from Cleburne County. The third recipient is Cody Jameson from Howard County. Unfortunately, Cody was, not un was unable to attend the ceremony, though. And the final recipient is Julie Griffin of Benton County. Julie had a previous engagement and was, not under, un, and was unable to attend this evening. Each of these recipients will receive $625. The Raymond C. Cox Scholarship is made possible by the Arkansas 4-H Alumni Association. The Alumni Association awards their scholarships in honor of the late Raymond C. Cox, the first state chairman. Ms. Edna Marie Belden, representing the Alumni Association, will make this presentation. This year's first recipient is Ashlyn Ward from Polk County. Ashlyn will receive $500 for her studies. This year's second recipient is Zoe Armstrong from Washington County, who will also receive $500. In 1994, Arkansas Forest members gained the opportunity to apply for the Maida Azabel Scholarship. Mrs. Azabel was a longtime supporter of 4-H, and making this presentation is Mr. Mike Boyd. This year's recipient is Hannah Helms from Clark County. County. Hannah will receive $400. The Seiden Stricker Family Scholarship was established to recognize an outstanding Arkansas 4-H member. This year's recipient is Brennan Seymour of Sevier County. Brennan will receive $1,000. Arkansas 4-H is pleased to offer the Fayetteville Rotary Club Dale Killian Memorial Scholarship. This student must be from Washington County and planning to attend the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville. Joining us to present this award this evening are Mr. and Mrs. Charles and Sharon Killian, family of the late Dell Killian and members of the Fayetteville Rotary Club. This year's recipient is Sierra Burnett from Washington County, who will receive $1,000. The Mr. Bill Outstanding Animal Science 4-H Scholarship was created to continue the incredible legacy of Mr. Bill Duro, who worked for 40 years at the Arkansas State Fair. Mr. Bill loved working with youth, and his memorial scholarship is awarded to a past State Fair exhibitor who has exemplified excellence in leadership and has demonstrated a commitment to pursuing a career in the animal science industry. This year's scholarship recipient is Julie Griffin of Benton County, who will receive $1,500. Unfortunately, Julie was not able to attend this evening. Farm Credit of Western Arkansas has been a longtime supporter of Arkansas Forage Program. With deep roots in the agriculture industry and beyond, Farm Credit is once again honored to present two scholarships to Arkansas 4 Hers. The first scholarship awarded is to Jessica Tanner from Logan County, who will receive $1,000. Unfortunately, Jessica was not able to attend this evening. The second scholarship goes to Georgia Patterson of Carroll County, who will also receive $1,000. 
Congratulations to these scholarship winners. Let's give them all another round of applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please again turn your attention to the video screens as we highlight the achievements of tonight's third Governor's Award finalist, Katie Gardner from Washington County. I first got involved in 4-H at age nine whenever I moved to Arkansas, and I remember one of the first things that I learned in one of my community service projects volunteering for Senator John Bozeman's campaign um, was that he told me that next to church, 4-H was the best thing that his kids had ever been involved in. And as someone who's interested in public service, that's something that stuck with me. My main projects are performing arts, public speaking, community service, and citizenship, and I was able to bring these projects together to create my own service platform called BOWS, Blessing Others with Service, and use this to mobilize performers and volunteers and educate elementary school students all across the state um, to use their service and uh, talents in nursing homes, and particularly in the veterans nursing home, to be able to bless their day with their talents. As a dancer, this is a way that I was able to give back to those who have served our country and really create something that was unique and special to our community. I think one of my earliest memories of 4-H was sitting at a county council meeting and hearing kids talking about the trips that they were going on. And all I wanted to do was go on those trips, but I was too young. And now today, I've had the opportunity to go on several free trips to Washington, D.C., thanks to 4-H. I've had the opportunity to travel all across the country making friends and making memories that really have just built me to be the leader I am today. Attending National 4-H Congress was one of the most incredible experiences I had had as a 4-H'er. And it continued to grow and to continue to benefit me over the years as I was selected to serve on the National 4-H Congress design team. I think the mentorship opportunities through 4-H have been the biggest thing for me. That's how I got started and that's how I really uh, realized that 4-H was something I wanted to invest my time and efforts into and it's something that uh, as I've grown older is something I've realized I need to give back to the younger students that I encounter every day in 4-H. I think what people don't realize about 4-H is that you can do anything you've set your mind to. I know that's something we say a lot, but really, if you want to go into agriculture, there's a place for you. But if you want to go into science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, there's another place for you. And really, anywhere in between those. And I think that that's the coolest thing that we can share with youth across the state and really empower them to invest their time in something that they're going to be interested in and they're going to find meaning in and they're going to find a purpose in. 4-H is what gave me my public speaking skills. It's what gave me the passion to serve my community. And it's what's given me opportunities to do that. Um, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to intern at the United States Department of Agriculture for Sunny Purdue. And I wouldn't have the opportunity to intern at the White House this summer if it weren't for 4-H and the skills that it gave me. And I think that that speaks volumes to the youth development that 4-H is able to provide to the communities, the state, and this nation. I'm thankful that 4-H taught me that success is not always based off winning. It's based off what you learn along the way and how you're able to grow from those lessons. I'm thankful for the 11 years that I've spent in 4-H and how it's gave me the opportunity for my passions to become my purpose and my purpose to become my vision. Katie, please join us on stage to be recognized as a 2019 finalist for her hard work and dedication to Arkansas 4-H. Congratulations, Katie. The next group of winners have worked hard to make their projects the best they can be, and they have excelled in their project areas. Through 4-H projects, members learn life skills such as decision-making, communication, responsibility, service to their community, and record-keeping. Tonight, we are honoring these outstanding 4-H members for their hard work. Many years ago, Mr. C.A. Vines, an extension legend, Established, established the Vines Medallion as a form of recognition for state record book winners. Mr. Mike Boyd, president of the Arkansas 4 H Foundation Board, will present these medallions to the winners. Announcing our prestigious winners are Keila Barney, Wachita District Vice President from Polk County, 
and Jessica Griffin, the first vice president from Greene County. As we recognize our 2019 state project winners, we would like to give special recognition to the organizations, businesses, and individuals who, through their contributions, make this award possible. Many supporters of 4-H have provided the resources to make each record book winner's trip to National 4-H Congress a reality. A list of tonight's record book winners paired with their donors may be found in the program. Please hold your applause until each group of record book winners has been recognized. Thank you, Nick. Tonight's first category of record book recipients represent the Animal Science Initiative area and will be sponsored by the 4-H Livestock Fund and the Arkansas Livestock Show Association. Paige Barrett, Benton County, Swine. Kylie Weir, Benton County, Beef. Victoria Lehman, Conway County, Sheep. Carly Dodd, Garland County, Goats. Caitlin Danzi, Pope County, Horse. Olivia Branham, Sebastian County, Horse. Taylor Looper, Sebastian County, Poultry Science. The next category of record book winners come from us from the Encouraging Individual Development Initiative areas. These awards are sponsored by the Arkansas Association of Corporate Extension Specialists, Arkansas Farm Bureau, Roslyn Foods, Dr. Martha Ray Sarter, Epsilon Sigma Phi, and Farm Credit of Western Arkansas. Faith Fritch, Benton County, Arts Humanities. Megan Pigeon, Benton County, Achievement. Destiny Tate, Benton County, Art to Humanities. Emily Dunn, Sebastian County, Art to Humanities. Callie McDaniel, White County, Leadership. Our next record book winners are from the Enhancing Health and Well-Being Initiative area. These awards are sponsored by the Sue Marshall Endowment and Joel and Kim Harrison. Phoebe Dawson, Ashley County, Food and Nutrition. Maddie Mitchell, Benton County, Food and Nutrition. Calvin Snyder, Benton County, Bicycle.
Joshua Stepmeyer, Benton County Health and Fitness. Abby Lamb, Howard County Food and Nutrition. Natasha Hightower, Independence County, Food and Nutrition. Macy Smith, Mississippi County, Food and Nutrition. Jelena Payton, Pope County, Food and Nutrition. Brennan Seymour, Sevier County, Health and Fitness. The next group of Advanced Record Brick winners will be representing the Plant and Soil Science and Protecting the Environment initiatives. The initiative winner are sponsored by the Hazel Jordan Endowment, Southern Cotton Jenners, Mr. Tony Baker, Arkansas Farm Bureau, and the Arkansas Association of Extension and 4-H Agents. Hannah Jackson, Benton County, Gardening and Horticulture. Tyler Thompson, Clark County, Gardening and Horticulture. Stephen Wilson, Cleburne County, Plant and Soil Science. Casey Burden, Washington County, Plant and Soil Science. Neely Den Herder, Washington County, Gardening and Horticulture. Jacob Jarding, Benton County, Environmental Stewardship. Savannah Watkins, White County, Outdoor Adventures. Our final book of record book winners represent the strengthening families, utilizing science and technology, and valuing agriculture initiative areas. These areas are sponsored by the National Extension Association of Family and Consumer Sciences, Arkansas Chapter, Sue Marshall Endowment, Dr. Donna Graham, Mike and Cynthia Klump, Bruce and Brenda Vick, and the Arkansas County Agricultural Agents Association. Shelby White, Madison County, Family Life. Chase Blum, Baxter County, Robotics. Alex Wilson, Faulkner County, Technology and Engineering. Eva Berryhill, Hot Spring County, Vet Science. Nicholas Trombley, Howard County, Technology and Engineering. Clayton Stark, Lone Oak County, Agriculture. Congratulations to our 2019 Record Book winners.
At this time, we would like to showcase the achievements of tonight's final Governor's Award finalist, Caleb Swears from Lone Elk County. The way I got involved with 4-H was I was scouting a field with my county agent, Mr. Keith Perkins, and he was talking to me about going to shooting sports practice that day. I went to practice that day and it was like nothing I could ever have dreamed of. And it broadened me out to what shooting sports really is, especially within 4-H. And within a month, I was involved in the leadership team and the livestock judging team. One of my earliest memories that I still cherish to this day was the first time that I came to a livestock judging practice. I remember coming in and feeling so overwhelmed, especially coming from a six generation rice farm and knowing nothing about livestock. I was very humbled to find out though that they were wanting to help me and wanting to help me grow as a human and as a 4-H'er. That ended up letting me go to the World Dairy Expo with Arkansas 4-H as a state winner in dairy judging. I would have never had that opportunity without 4-H and I cherish it every day. And it all started with just showing up to a livestock judging practice five years ago. The experience that stands out the most in my 4-H career would have to be going to the World Dairy Expo because it shows me that no matter what background you come from, which with me coming from a family rice farm and getting to judge livestock and actually win a state competition, it shows that you can accomplish your dreams if you really set your goal high enough and I believe anybody can do that. One of the biggest highlights within the past year would have to be working to help start a collegiate 4-H chapter at the University of Arkansas. This has been in the making for the past year and it's finally came off the ground and I hope to see it grow and the legacy of it that we can leave behind. 4-H helps Arkansas and the country by not only providing a once in a lifetime experience for you, but it also gives them the skills that they will need to be productive citizens throughout life. Personally, 4-H is important to me because it's made me who I am today and it's shown me what my purpose is in life. I hope to one day go to Washington DC and do my part in working with agricultural policy and then come back and work for Extension where I know I can make a difference in the lives of youth just as mine was changed through Arkansas 4-H. I would not be where I am today without the skills that I've learned through 4-H and it, I definitely would not be the leader I am today. Please join us on stage to be recognized as a 2019 finalist for your hard work and dedication to Arkansas 4-H. Congratulations, Caleb. I would now like to ask Dr. Darlene Millard, former Arkansas 4-H state leader, foundation board member, and sponsor of the Governor's Award to come to the stage. Dr. Millard will be joined by Dr. Rick Cartwright, Dr. Martha Ray Sarter, and Dr. Christina Miller to present the 2019 Governor's Award. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please turn your attention to the video screens for this very exciting and special announcement from Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson. Each one of the finalists brings excellence to 4-H. We are proud of you, and I'm pleased to announce the 2019 Arkansas 4-H Governor's Award recipient, Sagely Burnett.
Congratulations to the Governor's Award finalists, the Governor's Awards winner, and all of tonight's honorees. We would like to once again thank the Arkansas Electric Cooperatives and the Arkansas Farm Bureau Federation for making this evening possible. We have a few quick announcements to make. Thank you to the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Everyone received this customized 4-H gift. And um, whenever you received this whenever you picked up your registration packets yesterday. So thank you once again to the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Please do not forget, you can always follow our Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter feed for updates, all with the username, at Arkansas4H. Tonight is County Night Out. Please enjoy this time with your fellow 4-Hers and celebrate the hard work of 4-Hers from across the state. Reminder that buses will take you to your competitive events off campus departing at 7.45 a.m. tomorrow morning. They will be at the bus stop in front of Hots Hall. Make sure you are there in plenty of time to get on your bus and good luck in your competitive events. Also, please remember to wear your new State of Rama t-shirt tomorrow. We cannot wait to see this campus lit up with all of our 4-H spirit. New and retiring ambassadors will be recognized at the closing awards assembly tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock p.m. here in the ballroom. Ambassadors, please wear your polo and khakis to this event. Once again, we would like to thank you for joining us this evening and special thanks to all of the donors who supported tonight's awards. Another round of applause for them. And don't forget about our official UAEX and 4-H Arkansas 4-H Arkansas backdrop outside the ballroom that you can use to take pictures in front of after we adjourn. This concludes our program for the Arkansas 4-H Awards of Excellence ceremony. Have a great night.